Hi folks, Jason and Dan here with Kirk Giordano Plastering and today in this quick video what we're going to show you is some tips for applying a dash finish. Now the homeowner here, he did a scratch and brown, he floated it, it looks pretty good. Could he paint it right now? Absolutely. Would he notice it? Absolutely. Uh, his tie-ins aren't perfect and this float finish, while it looks close, it's not consistent enough or deep enough with the peaks and valleys and the sand to look like a dash finish. So when you do a dash finish, the two things to start with first is we need our material to be wet. The brown coat needs to be kind of moist or wet so that we get a good mechanical bond. You can do that with a water hose or you can do that by taking your sponge float, dipping it in water, and just tapping everything to where the patch is wet. Now, around the edge where the new dashed finish is going to stick to the painted surface, I had to put Weldcrete or a bonding agent there. You can use whatever you want, uh, whatever company. There's a lot of companies that make that stuff. So, after the prep work, what do you do? You have to go and you have to mix really soupy mud. We're using just regular Portland cement, and even though I only need this much material, check out what we had to mix. We had to mix almost a full bucket because you need to be able to submerge the brush. First I dip it in water, then I dip it in my soupy mud, and I shouldn't have gone over the handle like that, but just for the sake of the video. Then you shake some of it out, and then now we're going to carefully throw it on, just like a dash of salt. And you can do this more, you can do this less. You're just trying to match the consistency that the existing finish is. You can see I covered this window because there's no such thing as clean dashing. Of course, if you watch our dad do it, he's uh, pretty dang accurate and very clean. I'd rather cover, which makes it a lot easier for me in the long run. After a few times, the brush gets so full that you need to dip it in your water again. So, I dip it in the water to clean the handle, clean up in the top. And this time when I dip it, I don't want to go all the way in and get it all over the handle. We shake it out. And I can see I'm getting a few drips here. That's okay. We'll come back. The important thing when you're doing a patch like this is your transition. The actual patch, the body of it, you know, that will blend in well enough pretty much no matter what I do. But the transition has to be better than what the homeowner can do. Otherwise, why would they pay me? And we're just about there. All right, you see how quick and easy that was? If you've got enough mud in your bucket, if your surface is ready, then because we always make a big mess, again, there's no way around it. You take your water hose, you clean up below, you clean up the side, And I don't want to spray the top because that will uh, cause everything to run off. And you can take your sponge float, we'll clean our tape. Now what do you do if there are areas where there was too much and it runs down, it's too heavy? You can clean your dash brush. I can always tap it with this to make it a little more uniform. I can use my float to clean the area. And you just kind of go over and over until you get to a consistency you're happy with. I'm gonna clean up a little bit. And there's one or two little spots I can see that I'm gonna fix, but the point of the video stands. You see how quickly and easily you can throw the material on with a dash brush if you mix it just right. 
Anyway, I hope you guys learned something. We thank you folks for watching, and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, as always, we want to say thank you for watching. If you like what we put out, please like and subscribe, and we'll keep making content for you. And as usual, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.